Are rates really going up? Come on, be real. We'll talk all about it in this one. <laughs> You're talking about money, right? Break yourself <laughs> widely from the pack moving forward. That's something that you would be willing to, to have a discussion about. If they didn't get it. They, they probably like, didn't right. get it. Yeah. To follow up with your clients to generate more leads. Hey guys, welcome back. This is Millennial Market Talk and I am Mark Jones, your Millennial Mortgage Expert. And this is your Millennial Mortgage Update. And boy, don't I look snazzy today. Um, one of my loan officers had asked me if I was going for a job interview and I flipped it around and said, I interview every day. It is interviewing with you guys and selling myself and what I provide to you guys in way of value. And hopefully you get a little bit of value out of this quick Millennial Mortgage Update. So without further ado, let's talk about it. Let's show you something here which the article is titled Mortgage Rates Forecast for March of 2022, Upward Pressure Continues. I think it's important for us to make sure that I tell you, I found this article on bankrate.com they take payments from different mortgage lenders throughout to advertise their mortgage rate not educating borrowers on what different type of programs it is simply rate driven um further prediction if we as a whole stop buying just based on interest rate uh, versus the benefits that homeowning actually has maybe places like this won't be able to do the things that i'm getting ready to get into the article starts with most signs point to higher mortgage rates in the coming days and weeks. The markets are volatile because many factors, including geopolitical conflict and continued inflationary concerns. I'm going to stop right there. Um, typically, guys, when there is a, a wartime or there's geopolitical things going on, yes, it is volatile uh, and lots of volatility, but rates typically go down to induce people to continue to buy and get the economy going. Um, the real reason, in my opinion, has a lot to do with inflation and trying to get that under control. You combat that with higher interest rates, which essentially not necessarily slow down uh, people in purchasing, which it actually does in theory, but the idea is to have investors start making more money on the profits for them to reinvest into the market. So let me continue. Meanwhile, home prices aren't getting any cheaper. So if you're doubting whether to lock in a rate now or later, your window of time may be dwindling to capitalize on the current rates before they head up. And when they say current rates, technically current rates is daily. They change daily and sometimes multiple times in a day. So I don't want this to skew your understanding of what uh, interest rates do. Uh, in addition to you can only lock when you're under contract. Uh, the idea behind that is us as the lender is reserving an amount of funds with a certain investor that essentially we're going to sell the mark the loan to on the secondary market um so when it says capitalize on uh today's rates i mean you've already passed that we're on to the next day the market's closed um, so I, I think it's always a good time to buy regardless of when the rates are. Obviously, if rates are on the rise, um, it's always a better time to buy yesterday than it was today. Uh, it's kind of like Joe's Crab Shack here locally. Free crabs tomorrow, but it's always tomorrow. Anywho, so as I continue, oh, and as I continue down on this, it looks like they're trying to um, put more advertisement and rates in front of us. But what I find that is strange is I haven't clicked a thing and it's automatically setting me up for refinance um, and a 15 year mortgage. So uh, that is very strange. So let's look at some of these and I'm looking at it and it makes it give the appearance that rates are super low, uh, still in the twos below 3% which that's not accurate. So let me go over here. Uh, let's just pick Sage. Sage, uh, let's jump over to Sage. Let me put that on my screen. Oh, and look what pops in here. So there's another thing that's strange. This is Sage Mortgage that I'm looking at, their rate. There's Sage and it's saying, matter of fact, let's click this guy here. And it says these rates and terms and fees as of two, three. So that was as of the 3rd of February, meaning this rate has not been updated at all. So again, it goes back to the 
actual video where I talk to you guys about how to shop for your interest rate, what you need to be looking at. You need to look at the rate assumptions um, and you need to look at the fine print because there's a lot of things in here that are misconstrued, especially the fact that they're showing you a 2.125 interest rate. Um, and it is on a 15 year mortgage with, as you can see here, 20% down credit score higher than 740 in a specific area. Um, and again, these rates are way, way, way expired. And that's a little strange too. I'm looking at a 2.13, but yet on their website, they're advertising a 2.125. Again, <laughs> I'm just here to give you guys the information. You do with it what you will. So let's continue with this article. And it says, ask the pros and most will agree, mortgage rates should tick up in March. I anticipate the 30 year fixed mortgage rate to hover around 3.9% next month with a 15 year fixed rate between 2.9% and 3%, says Nadia Evangelou, director of forecasting for the National Association of Realtors. Rapidly rising inflation and expectation that the Fed will raise short term interest rates as soon as this month will continue to push up mortgage rates. March is also the month when the Fed's assets purchase program is set to end. That means that the current economic stimulus policies will conclude very soon. It's also important for you guys to understand what really controls interest rate. It is the short term rates that typically the 10 year, if you watch the 10 year rate to the Fed, you'll see that mortgage rates follow in line behind that. So let's continue. Greg McBride, bank rates chief financial analyst, foresees even costlier rates. With inflation figures continuing to surprise to the upside, mortgage rates will remain above 4% on a 30 year fixed and above three and a quarter percent on the 15 year fixed mortgage in March. The wild card in the extent to which news like Russia's invasion on Ukraine takes center stage as the impact of mortgage rates could go either way, he says. And that's what I mean by um, interest rates typically go down if there is a uh, a war or any kind of crisis abroad that we have to get involved with historically it's kind of what uh, the philosophy of me and my generation we really have only known low rates starting from the 9 11 tragedy and now coming into COVID and things of that nature, we don't know what it's like to have above a 5% interest rate. I don't think it ever reached above that in the time that I have been able to purchase a home. We have to take a big broader picture of what really interest rates should be all around and who knows? I mean, it gives you a little bit of perspective on this. And let me continue. The world is intensely focused on Eastern Europe and the image of bombs, tanks, and troops. Sanctions against Russia could shape the direction rates head in the forthcoming weeks. Tension between Russia and Ukraine might affect global markets. This could cause mortgage rates to fall as more investors would move from stock into the safety of bonds. However, the feds will likely raise short-term interest rates as soon as this month, thereby moving up mortgage rates. An even bigger catalyst on the rates than Ukraine conflict may be the lingering spectator of inflation. And there you go, they mentioned it. I wanted to make sure that they at least mentioned that within the article because that's the truth, guys. Um, unfortunately, inflation is really what is driving our market and having the Fed cool things down a bit. As I mentioned in a lot of these videos that you see, as a current renter, my message to you is to start being creative, stay true to the overall goal of actually becoming a homeowner and keep going. When I say get creative, go back to a couple of videos where I talk about leveraging your FHA approval to purchase a home with multi-units to be able to leverage the other units and pay your mortgage for you and even buy maybe a little bit more than what you're currently approved for if you have the additional income coming in. Looking into uh, rehabilitation loans. There are plenty of homes that are sitting on the market and have been sitting on the market for quite some time because unfortunately, most don't have the creativity and or the means or the knowledge of seeking a rehabilitation loan like a 203k FHA uh, reno loan. If you're working with a lender outside of Texas, by all means, I think it's important that you guys at least bring these couple of options up when they're giving you your options. 
um, ask them about renovation loans, ask them about the different options you have of purchasing a multifamily home. But if you are looking to move to Texas or currently in Texas, take a look at LockAndTerraLoans.com and our team of experts is always here to help you. We work weekends, we work after hours. We are not your typical nine to five bankers. All of us here work for commission and our commission is earned when we help you accomplish the dream of home ownership. So that is again, LockAndTerraLoans.com. Um, for those of you that are seeking to move to Texas or moving within Texas, uh, for all those outside, visit ReviewMyMortgage.com, which is the largest index of mortgage programs nationally. That being said, guys, I hope you have a great rest of the day. I'm Mark Jones, your millennial mortgage expert, and you guys make today count. <laughs> you were talking about money, right? Separate yourself <laughs> widely from the pack moving forward. That's something that you would be willing to, to have a discussion about. Because they didn't get it. They, they were probably like, hey, didn't right. get it. Yeah. To follow up with your clients, to generate more.